Hey gang, how's it going? It's Christmas Eve. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my God! So I felt very festive and in the mood to give you all a rather wonderful gift. The gift of reliving my worst experiences in a darkened cinema with strangers from 2016. Come on! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Yeah. So normally most critics are, you know, putting up their top 10 uh, compilations and blogs, but, but I like to mix things up a little bit and post a worst of list right from the get-go instead. Why? Um, because I guess I like to drum up uh, old pain <laughs> and put more salt on still healing cinematic viewing wounds. Ah! Uh, but more healthily, I actually derive great pleasure in uh, creating these lists every year and these compilations. Um, because they kind of allow for me uh, an opportunity to exercise the movie demons of the past year. That the power of Christ compels you! That's just how I roll. So enough of the chit chat from me. Let's dive headfirst into my five worst films of 2016 and the five reasons why you should have avoided the cinema like a plague. And I will do these films in random order until at the very end I'll pick the single worst film of the past year. Ooh. Let's do this. Let the hate flow. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Do it! Grandma's funeral was yesterday. She told me on her deathbed, you get back out there again. Hey, Grandpa. Did he just call you Grandpa? What the f- Wanna be a lamb and get that for me? You know, if your idea of a good time at the movies is to see a legendary Oscar-winning actor of films such as Raging Bull and Taxi Driver, I don't know, aggressively masturbate, drop N-bombs, insult homosexuals, make jokes about child and prison rape, and Dirty Grandpa is the film for you. Uh, for everyone else with some semblance of taste and decency, I beg you, stay the hell away from Dirty Grandpa. It is a film of Limitless awfulness that shows a startling disdain uh, for its audience. Why are they screaming? They're not screaming. They're celebrating. They're coming back. It has its own gravity. This film came 20 frustratingly long years after the release of its incredibly popular original from 1996, which I greatly enjoyed, but you know, oh my God, it's such an excruciatingly bad film and a work of such soul-crushing disappointment. Um, it's probably one of the most tediously written, ineptly acted, and aggressively stupid big budget Hollywood sequels that I have certainly seen in an awfully long time. What goes up must come down. Shouldn't we be nervous? Um, yeah. I say this with absolute regret because again, I enjoyed the original film, which was indeed silly and overblown and cornball. That film was an ingeniously marketed summer blockbuster film not to be missed. Independence Day Resurgence is a wrong-headed non-event film that simply needs to be avoided. Um, yeah. What's next? I'm gonna walk in on mom giving dad a push pop. What's a push pop? It's a sexual term that I just made up. What's a push pop? It's a whole hand up and ass, David. Two oh hands. Oh God, two hands. Whoa. Push in the pop. Push in the pop. <laughs> what the what? fuck? Are you insane? You're insane? No. Just, just no. What 
Dante's Inferno. Dante defined our modern conception of hell 700 years ago. But these circles of hell have been rearranged. Just no. This film has one of the most highly fitting titles of 2016. Inferno is a qualitative dumpster fire of ginormous proportions. Uh, this film is made all the more shameful. Uh, considering that this is the third film in the exploits of the superhumanly intuitive symbologist? Is symbology an actual science? Yes! Uh, based on the literary source material by Dan Brown, uh, we have an Oscar nominated director uh, making this film, we have an Oscar winning actor in front of the camera, but this is such a dumb movie featuring very smart people. We only have 48 hours to stop an extinction level event. I will do everything I can to find it. Um, and it ultimately, Infernal feels like a big budget studio effort that barely feels ready for made for cable TV viewing consumption. And it has no business being as mindlessly wretched as it is considering the players involved. Come on! You know what? This sequel could have been a solid course corrected entry in the Dan Brown cinematic universe, but it ends up just repeating the past mistakes of its predecessor. Tom Hanks, Ron Howard, shame on you. Shame on you, sirs. Come on. Okay, are you ready for my worst film of 2016? Ooh, Ooh that's a bingo. <laughs> Howard is a brilliant, creative, charismatic guy. He used to love life. Right now, he hates it. He writes letters. Who are they to? Howard doesn't write letters to people. He writes to things. Time. Love. Death. The reason I'm picking Collateral Beauty, a film that I just recently reviewed, as my single worst film of 2016 is because it's just a wrong film. It's just so fucking wrong. And for gosh sake, watch your language. It's wrong because it was falsely advertised. It's wrong because it used child death, grief, cancer, adultery, and infertility as a source of cheap manipulative melodrama. It's wrong because it tries to tell a grounded dramatic story about a lost soul that never once, once felt grounded in any type of tactile reality. Just look for it. I promise you, it's there. The collateral beauty. And you know what, it's, it was just a wrong film because it utterly squandered the multiple Oscar-nominated cast of A-listers. The film is just so wrong for trying to be a pathetic piece of obvious Oscar bait that didn't even have the decency to be any good. Collateral Beauty is just pure trash. Come on! Whew, that felt good. So Go. There are my five worst films of 2016. I will be posting a blog in the near future that will be outlining all of my picks for films that disappointed me in 2016, so be on the lookout for that. And of course, in mid-January, I will be posting a video blog and a written blog about my best films of 2016. Yes! All right. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you could like this video, I'd really appreciate it. If you could subscribe to my channel and give me some Christmas gift love there. Santa! That would mean the world to me. Take care, everybody. Merry Christmas to you all. And thank you very much for the few of you out there that have supported my channel this year. Um, that is the greatest Christmas gift of all. Take care. Two oh, hands. God, two hands. Oh. Push in the pop. Push in the pop. Just, just no.